Okay, this is the next part of my development journal. So I'm going to talk about the scaling of this app, some of the concerns um, I'm thinking about, have run into along the way, and yeah, I'll show some of this code operating while we do it. Uh, so yeah, uh, previous videos I talked about just sort of basic what the app does. This is a couple weeks ago. Uh, yesterday I threw this one up too that's talking about um, the daemon interaction of this app. Uh, so this is going to pick up from there. Um, so if you're confused, go back and, and watch some of that. Uh, okay, so um, in this application, um, when I drew this uh, uh, this box right here, I put single thread processing queue. That was sort of an initial version. Uh, for scale, I actually found a way to um, uh, thread the database accesses. So if there's lots of requests coming in for different pieces of art, um, they take different locks and access these file systems independently, uh, which you know gives gives some speed. So that's just one minor inaccuracy. I didn't. Um, that's just out of date. Uh, so the uh, the concern here is I want lots of I'm, I'm invoicing pixels. And then the, like these are small things. Ideally, we want lots lots of transactions per second. Lots of uh, clients all buying art and uh, you know buying pixels so that's a lot of lightning network transactions um, you know of course the market's not big I'm not you know this isn't really a business case I'm just trying to design sort of ideal software for this to make sure I'm not shooting myself in the foot uh, for down the road um, so lots of requests come in of course for every single one we got a invoice to see lightning and then that invoice gets paid back from C lightning and then we, we need to, to update so this is going to benchmark kind of my my uh, transactions per second so the very the very first thing to note um, so when I showed the other demos you know I'm using this moxie lightning I'm still using moxie lightning um, but I'm doing it in a slightly different way um, rather than calling this via the CLI um, I'm actually giving it the option to use mem memmock so what, what that's doing is just taking this class and holding it in memory it's bypassing all the shell interaction to um, uh, to C lightning because shelling out from Python takes like about a tenth of a second and that just kills my throughput and um, by putting it in, in memory I'm uh, more closely modeling this PyLightning script which is in the C Lightning repo and what this PyLightning script does is it talks to C Lightning over RPC and it avoids JSON, it avoids all those slow things that are in the process of um, of invoicing. It's just being more direct. So that's really what I'm what I'm emulating here. So I believe it's gonna be in the ballpark. I haven't actually done real testing, but uh, this is kind of one of the, the underlying assumptions here. So if I if I start my my backend, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, load some art into it. Uh, so actually, the the piece of art that I'm loading is in fact this rare Pepe, the Bad Lieutenant Pepe. Um, so what what that did? Yeah, I just I just loaded it in. So here you can see on the back end, it wrote all these files. So um, if I just go into Sorry about this. Didn't prepare this. Okay, so it wrote all these files, um, and yeah. So what this is, it's like a database of the Merkle tree that I calculated from the pixels. For example, it's got a database for the paid invoices. Obviously, no pixels have been paid at this point. Um, it's got a database of the pre-images, um, and you know, various other things along with you know the original. The original image and you know what the colors of all the pixels among other things to make quick lookups of those sort of things um so uh the, the other thing i covered this in the previous i have to actually attach the art for it to show up so if i oh i didn't start my server yet so if i start the server which is talk to that um, and refresh that. Yeah, there now it sees the art, and you can see that it's 400 by 560. Do the same here on on Chrome, just so I got the two browser sessions going at the same time. Uh, so yeah, at the uh, for the next thing, I'll just uh, load a bigger piece of art. Um, so what this is is the million dollar homepage, which you should be familiar with as a piece of internet history. 
so what I'm doing is yes yeah, so I'm same same deal now this is going to take about 20 seconds um, if I recall correctly uh, so as it's going it's slowly populating um, the databases it's doing that as quick as, as it can and yeah as I mentioned like yeah this is a stall of the application that's not a huge deal because as I mentioned at the start um, there's different threads so if I'm loading one piece of art that doesn't stop other guys from processing in parallel at the same time. I don't have that rigged up right now, but uh, yeah, that does in fact work. Um, okay, yeah, so that's that's done. So this is a million pixels. Um, so this Merkle tree is actually like 96, 96 megabytes. If I'm reading that, yeah, 96 megabytes, that makes sense. And yeah, the pre-image is 32 megabytes. So this is a little bit of hard drive spacing. Actually, this image is only like uh, 400K. So it's kind of an, an expansion. Now this is sort of the target size. This is a fairly complex thing. This is the size of Satoshi's place. So, uh, um, so yeah, that's kind of like a large image as far as what what our scaling concerns go. So yeah, I gotta attach that guy. Yeah, I'll attach that guy. So yeah, so he he showed up here. Uh, so uh, yeah, if I were to enter this now this is where things this is where I need improvement so if you notice there it took a couple seconds for us to actually get into the art now what I've got going on um, in the, if I can get into the chrome panel um, okay it didn't actually oh yeah okay so it's pulling pulling the art down and these are Satoshi prices so this is a big blob of JSON so I'm just throwing a big ass blob of JSON that has millisatoshi prices for each pixel, which these are all all rendered here. You know the price increases. I think I gave it a gradient of price increases, so it's like you know eight satoshis down there, but up in the corner, that's up as one. Um, so this is a very very large blob of JSON, so that takes quite a long time to transfer. Um, so that's more or less like the entire um, state database. Um, so if I, oop, that's not, I want to, yes, redo this one. Okay, so if I want to then enter the million dollar homepage, this is thousand by thousand. Uh, so you got all the JSON right now, so this is just actually the web browser um, choking on trying to parse the JSON. Yeah, finally it, it was able to, to parse. Chrome actually does a lot better job of parsing JSON than Firefox right now. Um, but yeah, this this is a pretty big usability barrier, um, and that could be easily fixed by replacing this kind of clumsy JSON format with like a binary blob, you know, to be able to encode this in binary and maybe even do gzip impression or compression, because uh, um, yeah, the state database that's 50 megabytes worth of uh, is that 50 megabytes? No, sorry, that's only five megabytes. Yeah, but that's still that's still a lot of state. So five megabytes, but then it gets expanded to actually fit into JSON. So it'd be ideal to just have five megabytes of binary state, and then gzip that to send it. Um, okay, so let's talk transactions per second. That's kind of the main point. Um, so people have done benchmarking on uh, C Lightning and um, um, you know just to kind of figure out what what the state of micropayments and frequent micropayments are. So Rene did this video. Um, see the ticker here. He's just benchmarking how many transactions per second. Uh, so he, I, like, I think during this video, it, it approaches ten. Um, I think other people, you know, in good conditions, you might be able to get thirty. Uh, I'm not sure what the story is, but that's kind of just where my mental peg is of where a good, good amount of transaction throughput, throughput is, because that's really the what we kind of understand what Sea Lightning is capable of there. So. Uh, what I'm going to do. Um, so that's okay. I'm going to just get out of here for a second. Back to lobby. So I'm going to go into Bad Lieutenant Pepe and I'm going to. So this is a script that's just in Python rather than a browser. It connects as if it were a web browser, and it starts invoicing and paying invoices, just in a loop. 
so you can see now that it's invoicing and and digesting the the discovered paid pixels um, so this these counters going up are rather quickly so actually yeah here you can see pixels being bought and they're sort of being bought at, in chunks of 50 at a time yeah it's stalled for some reason I think that has to do with um, I'm screen capturing so my hard drives kind of locked right now um, oh no no I think I might have ended yeah okay yeah no oh, sorry um, that, that was expected but yeah I bought these pretty quickly and you can see it was going at a pretty good clip so I'm actually going to um, do the same on the on the million dollar home page yeah I, I think I did a handful and then stopped and that was the plan um, so I'm gonna kill that um, so we'll go into the yeah the million dollar home page uh, and again yeah this is many megabytes worth of state I might get rid of that now because it's getting in the way of the actual okay so I'm gonna yeah do the same here for the million dollar home page so yeah this this guy is a client gets all the the megabytes worth of state Yeah, this is going a lot slower than it should be, and I believe this is hard drive related because um, yeah, it's going burst. So this is just a very cheap hard drive in this um, this particular laptop. Yeah, yeah there it goes. Um, I see my hard drive light was uh, getting getting grouchy. So yeah, it just took a while for it to get going there. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we're well in excess of. Um, Of uh, what's able to yeah okay so there you can see the pixels coming in yeah this this is only a dual core laptop you can see Chrome is now taking all my CPU um, and yeah my screen recorder is taking a chunk so hopefully this is still recording all right but yeah so that's that's where I'm at scale wise and then yeah as I mentioned the um, the JSON transfer is is a bit of a problem. So just as a as a comparison, if I can get this uh, computer to respond to me, let's see if Chrome does any better. And kill that. So uh, anybody watching this should be familiar with Satoshi's place. Hopefully, there's no porn today. Um, but just in case there's porn, I'm going to make that small. But yeah, the point here is on Satoshi's place, um, it is a thousand by a thousand, um, but uh, there's only 16 colors here on the palette, as you might have noticed. So I haven't dived into what is actually, you know, what is actually being transferred on the wire for Satoshi's place. But this tells me that there's only 16 possibilities for colors. So that's probably only four bits of information per pixel. Um, which is a different thing than really what we're doing here. We have, um, we have, yeah, it's essentially 24-bit color per pixel, and then you know the prices are embedded. There's different metadata on top of that 24 bits per per color. So, um, yeah, we have several times more information to transfer, and you know, also thinking if if a visitor is visiting, he's probably not just going to see one piece of art. He's probably going to uh, flip through a couple. So that's that's kind of in in our in our assumption here. Okay, so that's that's my um, brain dump on scaling right now. Um, yeah, sorry for a couple of the rough edges along the way. This is kind of a tricky one to orchestrate. But yeah, hopefully in the future I'll do more videos like this as I go. Um, certainly I'm developing. Um, so yeah, thanks for paying attention. Thanks for taking interest in this, and uh, good luck and have fun.